you don't need the equal sample sizes. It works just fine uh, if you don't have equal sample sizes. I suppose there might be some formulae out there that don't work with equal sample sizes, unequal sample sizes, but the one that I presented here definitely works. Now here's something that I've that confuses students a lot, including me when I was first learning the t-test, is that you can get negative t-values. And it's really just arbitrary which mean you put first. So in this case here, I put non-smoker means first, 5.33 minus 4.30 for a t-value of 3.07. Now I could have reversed it. I could have said 4.30 minus 5.33 which gives me negative 3.07. And from a two-tailed independent sample t-test perspective, it means the same thing. And that's why I went on about absolute values in the t-table. Whether I had negative 3.07 or positive 3.07, you need to think of the critical t-value in an absolute sense. And I'm just trying to get bigger in an absolute sense. Negative 3.07 is still bigger than the critical t-value obtained in this uh, study here, which was something like 2.04 or something like that. So here's something interesting, and i am be really impressed for the people that actually made it this far listening to the independent sample t-test. Uh, so it's really the, the, the keeners that made it this far, and I'm going to give you a piece of information that, uh, I th that helped clarify the independent sample t-test for me is these are two distributions and you can kind of think of these two distributions as the smokers and non-smokers but I'm dealing with two different means here so let's say I had this distribution was associated with a mean of 90 and this distribution was associated with a mean of 100 and the variance was 5 and the variance was 5 they were both equal to 5 for both groups and you can see there's a certain amount of overlap here which suggests that you know these two groups are not perfectly different from each other. There's a bit of overlap. And as the overlap decreases, uh, the t-test gets larger. And here's the t-value that I calculated from these values. The sample size is 20 in both groups. And you get a t calculated of negative 14.14 in this case based on mean of 9, 90, 1, and 100, and variances of 5, and sample size of 20. Now, if you had a distributions that looked like this, and the means were identical, so I've got mean of 90 and mean of 100, exactly the same as the first example that I just presented in the previous slide, but in this case, the variance is double. Variance is equal to 10 instead of 5, and the variance is equal to 10 here. And you can see the overlap here. Look how much overlap there is. The means are the same, but the overlap is much bigger because the variances are bigger. And when you calculate the t-test in this case, you get a smaller calculated t-value, which means that you're less confident that there's a statistically significant difference between these two groups. And it's simply because the variances are bigger. So as variances get bigger, uh, your t-test becomes less, your t-value le gets less big. And that's why some people refer to this top portion of the t-value as the good stuff. This is where you, you want to see big differences between the means. But you can think of, of the bottom portion as the evil. So it's a bit of the battle between good and evil. And these variances are evil because they're making the standard error, the difference of the mean, difference between two means, bigger. And all other things equal, you want a smaller standard error of the difference. So you want smaller variances, but you also want bigger sample sizes. So bigger variances increases the denominator portion, but bigger sample sizes actually decrease. So you also want uh, larger sample sizes. And anyway, I wanted to focus more on the variances here. Uh, so uh, for those who made it this far, uh, really good on you for making it all the way, uh, understanding the independent sample t-test and an example with real data. So you actually learned something uh, as well about smokers and non-smokers in terms of brain volume. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.